Azul and Tusker cut off. But that does mean Outsiders have to play it on point, finding that backline. I think that's a little trickier to do here, considering the mobility they have on these heroes aren't particularly amazing. So a lot of back and forth in the draft and it should lead to a fairly even and exciting game here, Mike. It certainly should, John. Game number one between Sonics and Outsiders set to get underway. And of course, the good luck have fun are coming out as far. He, he's too cool to type, John. He'll bring out the Mason voice lines once again. Make us giggle like little girls every single time he plays them. <laughs> very, very immature uh, cast as we are, Jonathan. Uh, very immature. Uh, it never ends. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, goodness. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no is it does it make you sad john like at our age we're still laughing at this crap it's, it's yeah, sad is it what, what kind of life different. do we live john i don't i don't yeah it's it's clear, it's very evident mike we cast dota yeah that's that's all i need to know about our <laughs> lives that's it smoke gallant absolutely under vision though under vision and the smoke is already broken yamich was there sonics they're still gonna try and move forward Plan a, a poison touch on someone as Farda is going to find damage, but that's not really the target you want. In fact, now the cookie onto two and Ramsey's. He's going to get right to work. Oh, I'm not sure about that, Sonics. Quinn, you'll get chased down now as well. He probably won't drop here on the Void Spirit, but they have already handed First Blood the way of Outsiders. And that's a bit of a rough start here for, for Sonics. Yeah, they... Really force out that smoke play. Awar being chased down here as well. That he is. He should be fine, but they are still going to harass him quite a bit as the rebound also there. You are just going to be forced to take a bit of an awkward start here in the Morphling and might even just walk right back to the fountain, honestly. Now Sonic's bringing Leslau down, so they're going to go for a bit of a lane switch up here by Sonic's. Bringing, up, bringing the timber here against Hakoda and Yamich. I should say rather Ramsey's on the jug. They want that kind of matchup against the Juggernaut. Fair enough. Yamich, is he going to stick around? And Hakoda, is he going to stick around? We'll find out soon, because MSS, he is not leaving Hakoda alone. Yeah, I like that adjustment from Sonics. They see Ramsey's run bot. They know they're going for lane switch and outsiders. They don't want the Morphling to deal with a Batrider lane. So they just kind of bail out, or they don't want the Timberside to deal with a Batrider and just kind of back off. And this should be... Still pretty good for Outsiders, though. Like, we talked about the strengths of Jug up against Tim. You've always got the spin to kind of avoid. Timbersaw is not going to feel that safe up against the spin itself, because that is magic damage. doesn't care for the reactive. So overall, Ramsey should be able to find farm. And even though this is a bit of a weirder lane for DM, when he went level 1 Firefly, he does hit level 2 with a solo EXP that Outsiders has given him. So the tri lane is kind of working out in terms of getting their bat rider started, at least. Oh, certainly so. I suppose the, the one thing that did kind of affect him a little bit is the level 1 Firefly, but it won't matter now because he has hit level 2 anyway. Damage is going to TP up, by the way. So Farda, he's going to be in danger already. Nice TP rotation. DMC is the opening. A great dispose out. Onto 2 once again, and Farda is just going to drop. Damage. he's thinking about not taking the kill, but eventually will just take it, realizing that his Batrider cannot do so. DM, he does take a substantial amount of damage, but he's going to be happy with that. Yeah, just a great set of kills coming out already for Outsiders. Zero to start. Top lane, it's something that will just stay aggressive. I think the one lane that you've got to rely on now on Sonics is Quinn's mid. Up against GPK on the Necrophos, they should be fairly passive. But that does mean the Void Spirit, again, should have a better time in comparison to laning up against the Batrider. Should have a little bit more CS as well, though. You can see GPK just kind of running around. Has the brown boots first, doesn't need a bottle. So you can't just kind of run up and harass out Quinn if he's not careful. Lane. Bit of a dive in, Quinn. He's going to be fine. The GPK getting rather aggressive now on that Necrophos. He's just fine, though, as Ramsey's bottom lane, Cookie, won't land onto MSS. A very nice little sidestep there from the Tusk. Uh, ensure he's just fine. It's... Certainly, if you, if you can land that Cookie into the spin, it's going to be quite a lot of damage. And MSS has held out on the skill point this whole time. Just not going for the snowball yet, not going for the tag team yet, just being very patient, just in case he needs that snowball to be up. Uh, 
The outsiders must take themselves a bit of a, a little bit of time to keep that farm going. Mitch trying to be as annoying as possible here in the Marcy, but see against the Dazzle, you do have to be somewhat cautious. Don't underestimate how much damage you can do with that Poison Touch. Yeah, it's level 2 now. Fod has got a little bit more presence coming out. And side lanes are still going pretty, rather slow in comparison for the side of Sonic, so they will have to try to find something more. Their, their momentum will have to really build off of Quinn and to an extent less Lao, considering an even laning start for the team, but for Quinn, it's starting to drop off a little bit. Like, he is getting harassed oh, out here. Oh, rotation's out. Cookie's gonna land. Quinn's gonna drop. Tips out from GTK already. Oh, Quinn, he's having a very rough time. <laughs> yeah, everyone's just eyeing him out. And, I mean, it it did end up being a better lane for him, but the rotations coming out from outsiders just kind of nullify that. You have a lot of presence coming through, even with just the snap coming in. And that's the one issue with MSS being so sacrificial right now on the Tusk. He doesn't have the levels to play. He's level Win. 2, he still hasn't skilled anything up. Win. Rebounds there. Disposed out. No ball's gonna save though. MSS barely there in time. Quinn's still trying to run. Might make it out, but the chase is going. Nice shards, however. It will save the day. Holy goodness. GPK, has he gone too far now? Farda is gonna rotate over, but GPK, he's still got help around. A nice Aether Remnant is gonna lock onto GPK. Still going for the fight, but is dropping low now. If they do get Farda, but they will find a very nice trade against GPK. They'll take the Necro, but now Quinn in danger once again. He's gonna try and Resonant Pulse, but it won't be enough. As more tips to come out, Quinn will be making the walk of shame back into the mid lane. And they're even forced to bring Yuwa on the Morphling just in case they need it. Yeah, it's a tough situation for Sonics. They they needed to find a punishment. They have to drag the Morphling in. That frees up so much space for outsiders to play this farming game. I mean, DM's just got the freest lane of his life solo. Going to be building up fast on that Batrider with no threat at all. And we've seen outsiders do this before. They drag all these heroes mid. They force the attention of the enemy team to turn there, turning it into a 3v3 lane. And the out outsiders just get a lot more out of Ramses and DM than the opposite team can with their own cores. That build-up is going to ramp up GPK off to a fantastic start despite that early death. The snowball save, as we mentioned, is big. MSS, you know, he's got the skill to get that done. Down the line, though, whether or not he's always going to be there to save is another question. Absolutely. Quinn getting unlucky with the power rune there as well. GPK might be able to contest or even just force Farda to take that haste. And he will. Very annoying here for the Void Spirit. Not able to secure that and... Almost two levels behind GPK now to make matters worse here for the Void Spirit. So this Necrophos matchup has worked very well for Outsiders. They are going to rotate more heroes in from Sonics to try and defend this mid-tier one tower. They do have that five-minute siege creep timing here from Outsiders. In they go, though, with the rebound. Yamich, yeah, a little bit off the mark there onto Quinn. They are eventually perhaps going to back off, but no, GPK, he wants to tank the T1 tower. In fact, never mind. He'll let the Siege Creep go down this time around. But they've already dealt over half the damage to that mid-tier 1. So they could really just come back at any time and finish it off. So quite detrimental here to the side of Sonics. And again, they've, they've just had to park three heroes mid every single time. But they can't play. Quinn does have six. He does have the two steps up. Jumping something like the Necrofo is might be a little bit too much. There's a lot of durability out on GPK. And... You know, he's going to have this really quick Spirit Vessel timing, which is to the detriment, especially of Yuwar. He's not going to enjoy that. Even the Timbersaw of Leslau isn't going to enjoy that healing reduction coming out. So you have a great way of cancelling through from that sustain that Sonics will want to fall back to. And even then, I, I don't know if Sonics is finding enough to really get up and running on those heroes. Like, Leslau does have a free lane now. So he's starting to get some room out on that Tim. It does feel like he needs to start... Making some plays that will force the attention of outsiders to him, because as it is, there's there's not much room for Quinn to get his initial items. He's still a ways off from even just getting his Witchblade here in this game. Yeah, it's a it's a very rough affair here. He'll still have a bit of time though to, to try and get that initial farm going, but he certainly can't start rotating as he's gonna try and fight over the eight minute power room, but gets unlucky again. Oh, it's gonna be an arcane as well, but it's gonna go to Yamich. He does chase down MSS for a little bit, but eventually we'll let him go. It's so hard though, like when you're this far behind in the Void Spirit, you do kind of rely on a lucky power room 
to kind of get you back into the game and allow some kind of rotation, but he's just getting nothing. Yeah, it's 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 just not coming out. And again, it's back to that commitment from outsiders to put all the attention on mid to free up the side lanes. You just see how much more DM and Ramses are farming. They, they're getting a lot more out from their heroes. You've got a pretty good travel timing for DM to get into. He even has a keen optic from neutrals for himself. So he's going to have a really good threat with Lasso coming up rather shortly. Whereas in comparison, Leslau, he's up there right behind GBK. But it does feel like the Timbersaw is much more sensitive to early timings. And we aren't seeing him get the attention that he'd want. In fact, we're still grouping up mid, still shoving in here. Damage is there, looking for a disposed target. And Quinn would be a very nice dispose as they do have the Reaper's Scythe and Spirit Vessel already up. Quinn, he's going to be very careful. Damage, going to be able to land it. Can they blow him up, Quinn? Going to be just fine. They couldn't land the cookie in time, so he's going to be all right to back his way out on the Void Spirit. But the problem is, John, they lose the mid-tier 1 tower. Outsiders, they have the jungle open now once again against Sonics, and they are going to really overtake now as Outsiders already heading towards the top lane. Would love to try and find your walk. No vision around to scout out Outsiders' position, so they are suddenly in a great position to try to make that happen. They're just going to land an initial stun, unless they find Farda instead, and they will... With that Observer Ward, they'll have the vision, they'll secure a Reaper Scythe kill here for GPK. In fact, Ooh. MSS also being caught out on the task will go down as you are. He has Waveform up, Spirit Vessel will be there, they'll try to lock him down. Yamage, he's around with the Dispose but won't go for it. In fact, now the turnaround is there, Sonic's gonna try and get something for their trouble. And it seems like all they'll get is Yamage out of this. But considering the position they're in in this game number one, they need anything they can get. Yeah, those are still some pretty important kills for them to find. Finally see Leslau show up, use some of that durability and that really great damage output he has you with what? a max out timber chain to rip through, although... Ooh, goodness me. Probably no Reaper Scythe available there onto GPK, but... Pretty rough affair for the Morph Gun. You kind of talked about the Spirit Vessel timing here for GPK, but... You just see how he's able to run him down. He knows that Yuar cannot in any way fight back against this Necrophos. Not without his team, and... But even with his team, GPK just a little bit too farmed at the moment. Yeah, he's way too far ahead and you are. He's trying to rush that. Lincoln's going to provide a lot of value up against Reapers, up against the Lasso coming oh, out. No. So, going to allow him to play more. Oh, no. I don't think he has enough damage to burst down Yuar, but if he had a plus one, and it is, uh, plus one is incoming, Yamich is there, but Yuar's going to be okay. Gets by the T2 tower and they won't go for the dive in. Radiant structures are fortified. It's fine for now. Radiant's bottom tower yeah. is under Smoke attack. out from Sonic's trying Sonic's to find top, top but DM attack. does back off in the nick of time. Has those travels up in the bathroom. Right? Mid lane. They've locked down Quinn again. He's going to be alright. Burst Radiant's damage right now to get the Void Spirit, but very, very close. Radiant's bottom tower. In the meantime, John Bot Lane, GPK does find the T1 tower, and Yuwa is still being watched as we speak. Yamich is there. This is what Outside is just proving to be very good at, John. You get a lead, you just kind of follow the opposing pause one and try to make their life a living hell. Is now DM top lane. MSS may just get caught. Does have Snowball available, but has to go back towards GPK to be able to get it off. So he is guaranteed to die, but at least you save Leslau, I suppose. For now. Lislao was also being chased down, but DM, he'll go after Farda instead. Much easier target, has the lasso up, and just no contest. Outsiders, they'll take another. Just run around, finding all these kills, 3 to 9. Uh, they're so confident right now that Ramses did finish up his Midas. So Midas first item on the Jug, he's not been contested, he hasn't died. And he's not even copying any spells. Uh, trying to play tag with Quinn, who again gets unlucky. He's just not, he's, uh, he does find a haze at the least, but not going to be able to play with it just yet. He's fine to get himself out. Outsiders, meanwhile, they are going to find you. Oh, you are. He oh, waved for right into him. That is so unfortunate. Great smoke timing there from uh, from Outsiders, John. They had a great observer ward. Keeping tabs on you are, and that's a very cheeky observer. Hard one to catch out there for the side of Sonics. Yeah, they've, they've been really good with the vision. Some of that's already been dewarded, but their vision around the triangles enabled this movement up, and they're, they're still going to run up here. No, there is an ops watch, though. 
damage. It's gonna be around. The is out. MSS trying to at least find one. They might get damage out of this. MSS will keep going for a run with the Shallow Grave out. Maybe he does manage with the TP and will do so for now. How much can they clean up though? Bada is gonna go down. So it will be a one for one anyway. And I, I think Sonics will be decently happy with that. Considering again, they, they are in a position where they need anything they can get. And that'll be enough for them as long as everybody else gets their way out. But outsiders not leaving this area. They really want to make sure nobody's farming this Radiant Triangle. Ben, are you thinking about going on to Hakoda? We'll get started. They might have another kill on their hands. Snowball will be, Snowball will be out. Aether Remnant will connect as well. Hakoda is going to drop, but here comes GPK. MSS in danger should drop here. No Reaper Scythe available, but it won't be necessary as now Quinn. Can he get his way out? Oh, not quite. He's got no step charges. Shallow Grave will be there. Still no step charges available, but he can try to dissimulate. In fact, he finds a kill. Oh, DPK is going to drop on the Necrophos as now you are. Going to try and turn this one back the way of Outsiders. DM in trouble. Will be chased down by the Morphling, but is going to be safe for now as he makes a run towards the north side. But there's no help in coming. Sonics successfully punish the side of outsiders who go way too far. Yeah, just they just cop a lot of damage from the tier two. Uh, no ghost route coming up there from GPK, and just a little bit too low on the HP to play. So they find a punishment in Sonics, and they are forced to rotate a lot more of their course. Like Yuvar is having to help these fights, but finding a couple of those kills is left helping him catch up. It's just not allowing him to really gap close that that fort you have on ramp. Not going to be enough this time for the Void Spirit. He'll be fine as GPK. Able to finish off the job. Ben barely going to get his way out. 7 to 13 now. Sonics still grouped up as a team. Ready to go whenever. Top lane, however. DM. Not going to bother trying to chase down Leslau. Doesn't have the lasso available anyway. So can't really lock him down. Leslau. Look kind of the... The back of uh, of Sonics right now, right? Like he's the highest net worth on the team. He's playing the Timber. He's certainly in a position where he can start to to frontline and fight for his team. And they might just need to continue fighting off the back of the Timber Saw. Yeah, they just need to use this big tanky target to kind of grab Outsiders' attention. They they still haven't been paying attention to him, but he has been popping up at the right time in these fights. And his damage output is still great. You don't have spell immunity up just yet from outsiders. No BKBs coming out on GPK or on DM, which you know, can't fault them for it. Although DM is building into one now, and that should help the cause up against that Timb. The, um, the Lotus Orb out from Leslau can also act as a really good way of saving and stalling. So you do have a lot more utility coming out and trying to help out your teammates here. And for outsiders. Doesn't feel like they mind too much. Like Ramsey's again is still farming. His Midas has paid off dividends considering how much free farm he has. Still number two in network right behind GPK. And it still doesn't feel like you have a clear answer for the drug just yet, all things considered. It certainly doesn't, John. Jump in. Aether, or rather, the Arcane Rune is picked up by Quinn, but that's all his step card is gone. So Hakoda going to go right into the kisses. Onto that Void Spirit and now DM going to see the easiest lasso of his life. Hello Grave, it'll buy a bit of time. You've got the Dissimulate available onto the high ground once again, but Quinn's gonna drop. Sure, you get the Arcane Rune, but not really worth your life, I don't think. Nah, no, you sacrifice so much just to get that rune away from GPK. To be fair, it is a big rune for Necrophos. Lower cooldown Reapers mean potentially more stacks coming out. They are keeping track of Les Lau up top, though. They are. Les Lau should feel safe without the lasso up, but the chase is ongoing. DM not going to leave this man alone. Even Hakoda finding Yawa, but trying to go for this kill on his own as a snapfire. His team is behind, but... able to make the move in. Outsiders, we'll have to let Sonics go. And meanwhile, Sonics, they are going to smoke us four. Keep in mind, you do have Reaper Scythe available. Could be a bit of a dangerous fight for Sonics to try and take, but they might even just relocate across the map here. Just... Use this smoke to try and sneak their way over to the bottom side of the map and keep that farm going. But they are going to use Quinn as bait. GPK has taken said bait, so maybe they can blow up this Necropos, but he's just so tanky. This man is not dying right now. Not yet, that is. 
is the flame break gonna knock them back sonics still trying to fight nice dispose onto the timber mss is gonna drop les Lau still trying to run with the reaper site gonna lock oh. him down and take him out as quinn trying to run as his step charge is available we'll hold down for now instead of oh, you are. You are, they're gonna find the morphling it's not over yet damage will keep going Quinn, he cops the spirit vessel oh done. He's God. going down. Outsiders will just rush them. And smoke. Wishful thinking from Sonics. A nice attempt, but they were not killing GPK. Farter? Uh, Farter's in trouble ah. too. Why not make it a full team IP, John? It won't be though, not this time. Oh. Yeah, no, no T to cancel out from GPK, but uh, outsiders, they see prime opportunity for Ramses to come in. He TPs into that fight. They expend everything they had to just jump GPK, and he's just so durable. He's got the Sanja holding him down. It's a lot tougher. The durability is skyrocketing, skyrocketing on that Necrophos. And for Sonics, it was all in. They, they had to try to find that kill. Didn't come out. We finally see the contribution of Ramses with his farm. Just the Maelstrom plus the Hyperstone into that Mjolnir is, is a ton of damage out for the Omni Slash. And there's just not enough saves to stop it here. They got the blink up on the damage, John. Oh, Quinn, he's not going to know yet. The suppose is there. Ramsey's, he'll move in, but there's no follow up. Quinn's going to be all right. Cookie, not going to land either. Illusion. 11k advantage, though, for outsiders. They are just looking absolutely huge at the moment. You look at Dota Plus, John, and I hate to make the game even more depressing, but 96% the way of outsiders. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one for Sonics. If you do manage to find a lot of farm on your war, it does still feel playable. Fata? Probably not making it out. He'll delay a bit. He kisses as well. I mean, why not? <laughs> I don't think outsiders think they need it at the moment, John. CPK bot lane gonna chase down Leslau. Looks like Leslau's gonna be oh, okay. Quinn. Quinn? Oh, mid lane. Oh, Lasso's out. Cookie there to follow up. He's gonna drop. It's just too much of a tempo. It's so hard for Sonics to keep up now. His outsiders, they'll chase down Leslau as well. They won't find the Timber, but DPK, he's just establishing dominance here. Radiant yeah, I mean, it's just a Necrophos with Travels, Spirit Vessels, and Sanj, and he's just so tanky up front, and he knows he's just not dying. There's no big burst damage coming out from Sonics. Even Leslau right now with the Timber Chain and the full complement of his spells isn't enough to really handle that Necrophos, and they're just playing it perfectly. 720 right now on the scoreboard, 13k lead out for Outsiders. Ramsey's just free farming the entire game for the most part outside of that one fight. They, I, it's just not enough net worth. Like you do have certain items coming out. You are again going into the BKB, might feel a little bit more durable up front, but the BKB doesn't save you from Lasso. If they find a way to break the Lincolns first, get the control afterwards, or you know pop the Lincolns before BKB, you still have a pretty good way of catching in that Morphling. We're still not at that point where MSS has his blink up on the Tusk for saves. Slowly coming up, but not quite there yet. And you can see outside just playing tag. <laughs> uh, Yamich is very confident with rebounding forward, forcing Quinn to use spells. Oh, what a scan. GPK just holding bot. What a scan here, John. They know Leslau's in the tree line. Do they want to go for it? Cookie forward, Leslau, realizing he probably has been scattered out, is going to back his way out. But the tip, or rather the uh, pings are there. They are not going to be able to catch the timber, however. We'll look at the group up here, outsiders. Bottom side of the map, want to try and rush into that radiant jungle. Smoke is going to be out, GPK. He'll play bait for the team. He's a very tanky boy, but they're going to try and burst him down, and they've got him. Oh, that's a great start here for the side of Sonics. It's MSS. He might drop. In fact, they found Leslau. Oh, it was looking so good, but it might turn into something quite bad here for Sonics. It's Leslau tries for the TP out, but is not going to make it. They are still going to lose two for one, but at least they find the, the Necrophos. We find out it's possible to kill him, John. Yeah, it takes everything, though. They have to get everyone on top of him and blow all their spells to just kill that one here and just provide such a big window for outsiders to respond. And they were grouped around accordingly, accordingly very well to get that done and still find a lot more out of it. They trade two for one. It's still a massive kill for Sonic, so considering the net worth of GPK. And if they can maybe punish that overconfidence of Outsiders two, three more times, that's when the net worth should sort of stabilize. You start to get a lot more play coming out from Leslau and from Yuar.
the BKB still has, again, decent enough timing considering the state of the game here for your war. For Quinn, once he has Ags, considering that Outsiders don't really have that many BKBs, that's going to be massive in the middle of these fights as well. But with a DD rune out for Outsiders, it's straight into Roche. They are spotted by the scan. Uh, Sonic has to kind of move in quick if they want to contest, though. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of put it out, John. DD rune on Ramsey's gonna gonna make life very easy here in terms of in terms of taking down that Roshan. Asher up now on Ramsey's as well. Even more control to come the way of Outsiders. At very least, you do have the blink up on MSS, so a bit more save potential here for the Tusk. There's Aegis up on Ramsey's. Game got even more challenging now for the side of Sonics. But do I say that, John? The uh, win probability is still sitting at the same thing, so they haven't gone any further. GPK, oh, gonna try after you are, they've got him. Then... Oh my god. They've even got the, the Death Seeker now to break the Lincolns on you are. Outsiders, even more. Lasso out, they got Farda. And no hesitation from DM, who happily lasso the Dazzle every single time. And Sonic, they don't have buybacks on either of those two heroes. Yeah, the respawns are fairly short though, but that's more than enough time for Outsiders to pierce into that high ground with how much damage Ramses does in damage. these fights, and they find more. Yeah, great to suppose out. Quinn, not gonna cop the follow-up stun though, is gonna survive, but my god, the amount of damage being pumped out by this Spirit Vessel by DPK. He just can't stick around. Tier 3 is going to go down. Outsiders, they'll go for a bit more. They've still got that Aegis MSS now. Also being caught out, but does have Snowball. He wants to buy a bit of time for himself. A jump in, win. The damage done onto Ramsey's, but not quite enough to, to really even think about taking him down. Middle the mid lane of Barracks to go down here. Outsiders, very happy with that. We'll back off and... Still plenty of time on that Aegis to, to come back high ground. Yeah, they just clear out at least a melee rack. Sonic's still gonna have to try to look for punishment. Smoke out from them. They don't have the best vision to spot where Outsiders are, and they're gonna have to make a bit of a walk to try to find the thing. Outsiders in a good spot to break that smoke, and they get the scan here as well. They will. DPK is gonna get jumped. Can they blow him up again? The Necrophos is gone. A great start here for Sonics, but can they keep it up? Yamich is gone as well. MSS, he will drop first for Sonics. As you are, it's being chased by Ramses. A nice bash, another nice bash. What? You are still trying to run. We'll still be able to waveform out. The end's got Lasso in three seconds though. But they aren't gonna keep going. Not without GPK and not without Yamich. Or will they? Ramses? Another bash out on Leslau. Up in again from Quinn, seeing the spin is gone. We'll try out the Hakoda, and they'll find a third target. Sonics, oh, they might even find Ramses here on that Juggernaut. But now, though, Ramses going to be able to outrun them. But a great fight for Sonics this time around. They get a lot out of that smoke. They find a punishment onto GPK, who still doesn't have anything to kind of per uh, pop off that control. No BKB coming out on the Necro, still just reliant on the stat resist. The respawns are fairly short. Age is still up for quite a little bit more time here. Two minutes left for Outsiders. They might be able to make a play off the back of all those expended spells and BKBs now. Outsiders, oh, they know you are there. That's the Morphling. DM, he'll be in range. Yawar is going to have his Lincolns broken, but the Lasso was committed for that Lincolns. Well, they found Quinn anyway. You don't get the Morph. You find the Void Spirit anyway. MSS drops as well. The Lasso was wasted. I mean, that's the one positive here for Sonic. Yeah, no Treadle for Lasso for a while. Well, nothing like an Octarine yet for DM to drop that cooldown and... Still a ways off from his levels to really have the uptime to get aggressive. But, yeah, not the biggest deal in the world. They still have Aegis running on Ramsey. Still clear out the last outer tower from the side of Sonics. And for Sonics, when the BKB from Yuar has been impactful. It's allowed him to kind of play a little bit more. But he needs a lot more to come out from his morph. Going for the Scotty next. Might be able to find it. They're just keeping track of him every single time. DM travels down. It does have the force to have the Lincoln's break, but again, no, no lasso for a bit longer. And for Outsiders, the Aegis is starting to take away here, Mike. Only a minute left, so probably not enough time to go for a high ground play. They are inching closer towards an item up for Ramses, though. It does look like he might be, what is it, Ags or perhaps Scotty coming out here? It's going to be big for the juggle to spin. 
Certainly will be another big thing here, John. Quinn yeah. is caught out, but Shallow Grave is there. Snowball was committed to try and save, so MSS is going to have his life gone, I believe. Let's dispose this out from a mile away with that Aether Lens. Quinn, oh, he's not out of danger yet here, John. He'll dissimilate and he'll be okay. Outsiders still finding one for their trouble. Ramses, maybe a bit too far, might lose the Aegis and will do so. But Quinn, dropping low, still saved by the Shallow Grave. In goes DM, however, with the Lasso, really just wanting Farter. And we'll find the Dazzle. They go for Leslau now. Paint away from the Timbersaw, but Sonic will be playing 3v5 for this top lane defense. Diwar, wake the jump in, dispose of his own on that Morphling. Quinn, on to the Necrophose, but it's not going to be enough. A nice cost back out from Yamich. Ramses will cop the Walrus Punch, but now they've got MSS. The task will be saved by Shallow Grave. Ada once again working overtime on this Dazzle. And after the Tier 3 Tower, that's going to be enough for Outsiders. They don't have the Aegis up on Ramses, so they will play it carefully. Maybe just wait out the next Roshan attempt. Yeah, they've got the room to get that done. They can keep every lane shoved in. Really good play from Ramses though. He only had what? Maybe half a minute left in the Aegis. Jumps right in, gets it expended, gets value from it anyway, and they find an objective off the back of it. Still, some timings being met here by Sonics. Quinn with the Ags. Going to be huge to deal with a lot of the heroes on Outsiders. Only the BKB up on DM. No such thing yet for Ramsey. So that silence is going to be one great way to catch off the Jug. Especially if they aren't around to kind of try to save him with, say, the Dispos here. Sonics will try to make use of it with a smoke. They are just running up north here, though, on the top lane. The outsiders aren't anywhere, anywhere near close. I think the lack of vision from Sonics is starting to hurt them. Probably just going to have to get this down as a ward run. Well, there's going to be a smoke on smoke scenario here, John. You can ward this down quick. Outsiders. Well, they're heading down bot anyway, so it looks like they want to try and set up the bottom racks now. Maybe just try and use one of these heroes as bait. Perhaps GPK, who has been baiting quite a bit for his team, and he'll head over. Get within vision of that creep wave. We'll see if Sonics want to try and take this bait. Yeah, just forcing the creep wave in. Sonics, they're not even going to respond to it yet. We'll just hang around the top lane and keep that farm going. And it seems like Outsiders, in the end, not going to commit for the, the high ground anyway. They'll just go back to the outpost for now. Yeah, but they've got DM in a nice sneaky spot if someone does come in to defend. Can go for the lasso play, and guess what? His favorite target shows up. Fata doesn't have vision of him, but if he just plays poking that creep wave, he's probably dead. They're out, Fata. Again, not under vision here for the bat. Even Quinn going to show up now. Pretty a very scary moment here for Sonics. DM just waiting for the creep wave. Quinn cannot stay around here. It's going to show eventually, DM, Firefly Immediate, Lasso is going to be there, GPK's out with the Reaper Scythe as well, and Quinn, he just gets absolutely deleted. Great patience there from DM and the rest of Outsiders, they knew someone was eventually going to show up, and they just used the Creep Wave to bait them in. Big pick off to find, it's been a, I mean, it's overall been a slow game for Sonics, but even Quinn, still stuck at level 16. On that Void Spirit at 31 minutes in, like, he doesn't even have his max out Astral Step. It's, it's it's a rough go for Sonics right now. The investment is kind of all in. You really on you are, and to an extent, Leslau. Timbersar is still allowed to build up. Ags on the menu here for Leslau, and he finds one on Hakoda. Or at least find something. You know, again, any kill's a good kill right now for Sonics. They'll take what they can get right into the outpost as well. To be fair, though, outsiders, they they only seem interested right now in going after the, uh, the Roshan attempt, and... Roshan is still going to be two and a half minutes away at least, so it gives plenty of time for Sonics to try and get some farm going and try to find a way to, to be able to fight back here against Outsiders. And what would be the way to fight against Outsiders here, John? What, what do they really need? Where they've been more successful is just finding that pick off on anyone from Outsiders that oversteps their bounce. So whether it be GPK, if they maybe get some good forward vision down and catch Ramses. Again, with the Ags up on Quinn, you have instant control. There's no BKB. Well, now Ramses does have the BKB in his backpack. Uh, if he did that maybe two minutes ago, that would have been your prime target. Now Ramses does have a way of at least having an item to break off from that silence and just kind of fight back now. So for Sonics, 
I don't know. Yeah, your best bet is still pickoffs, because that's where your lineup shines. In terms of team fight, you don't have the best control. Neither, is a, neither does Outsiders, mind you, but Outsiders has much more potent single target control. With the lasso, with the sight, even the dispose is massive. And that's something that just Sonics can't quite match up on. Big DK, he's in, but his team's right behind him. Dispose, not going to be there from Yamich. In fact, he might drop a lasso. Has caught out the Void Spirit. Oh, they'll get another. There goes Spider as well. Reaper Scythe, no hesitation as Yawar's taking the whole brunt of the Omni Slash. Ramses just bashes him up. Yawar's gonna try Waveform TP out, but they found him. Not quick Ooh. enough though. He's okay. Leslau is not. Four down, Yawar the only survivor. Mega Creeps incoming, they call it. They know they've had enough. There's no coming back in this game number one here for Sonics. They'll have to try again for game number two. But a very de decisive victory for Outsiders. Yeah, they, they play spectacularly well. They come in with a really strong draft. They take care of some of those key picks that Sonics wants to go back to. And to be fair to Sonics here, they go with their comfort picks, right? They go back to that Quinn Void Spirit, expecting it to have a great time. Even picking it up against the Batrider, which at that point they weren't quite sure if it was going to be offlane or mid, and did end up being the offlane. So Quinn did have a much more playable lane. But even from that factor, how Outsiders play has just been really strong. They, they just group up three heroes mid by five, six minutes, and they stay mid for like the next three minutes. It forces a six-man mid, frees up the side lanes, and Ramses and DM always excel when it's a solo play, yeah. solo lane. They, they just find all that farm. There wasn't enough to counteract them. They had a great lane with Jug versus Timbersaw. No kill threat onto the Jug there solo. And they just managed to build up. They have these great pickoff heroes that they just run with very well. And all of that control was just relevant until the late game. They had ways of piercing through BKBs. They had the mobility on their side. For Sonics, it was kind of just dependent on Quinn. He hits a decent Ags timing. They try to smoke up on Sonic's end, but they don't manage to find that big kill. And they don't really hunt Ramses. He was just free farming for basically the entire game. All right, John. Well, with that, we are going to have to set off to a very short break. But of course, right after that break, we'll be back for Game 2's draft between Sonics and, of course, Outsiders. We'll see you then. Radiance top barracks are under attack. <laughs> 